Hi, I'm Braden Kay, uh, and I'm really excited to be here in the urban neighborhood of Evans Churchill to talk about innovative education. Um, cities have often been associated with innovation. One of the critical things to understand in the 21st century is if cities are going to be innovative, we're going to have to tackle some serious challenges ahead of us. Cities across the world and here in the United States face economic development challenges, environmental challenges like water quality and air quality, and social challenges like homelessness and education inequalities. Now, I moved here to Phoenix and to uh, Arizona State School of Sustainability six years ago to become an urban problem solver and try to figure out how we innovate cities to solve these critical challenges. And what I discovered is one of the, one of the key solutions to this was four blocks away from my house, right here at Bioscience High School. I had the privilege for two years to work uh, with Arizona State's um, Sustainable Schools Program and the Sustainability Transitions and Intervention Research Lab as funded through the uh, National Science Foundation GK-12 program to work here with administrators and teachers and students on how we create students that are able to solve those 21st century challenges. So what we've discovered is we've been on this journey to create critical thinkers, problem solvers, and compassionate citizens that are up to the challenge, challenges of the 21st century. And here we have uh, the principal and two teachers that are gonna tell us a little bit about that journey. We'll start with Principal Boyce. Every community needs direction, a goal, and then steps necessary to realize that goal. At Bioscience, we have a mission, a vision and a mission. And that mission statement allows us to understand the type of students that we want to cultivate after four years of engaging in our program. It also articulates, and I see you're reading now, but not yet. It also articulates the steps that we need to take every day in order to hopefully realize that potential. Our mission statement, Bioscience High School provides a rigorous, collaborative, and relevant academic program, emphasizing an innovative problem-based curriculum that develops literacy in the sciences, mathematics, and the arts, thus cultivating critical thinkers, creative problem solvers, and compassionate citizens who are able to thrive in our increasingly complex and technological communities. Long, but important. And in this talk, we're going to start out at the very beginning talking about the what, the vision, the types of attributes that we want to instill in students by the time they graduate. And later, we'll get to the how, the mission part. So to start with the what is the most amazing art teacher at Bioscience, Ms. Grejalba, with Problem Solve. So we have a great strategy in place that we use to grow problem solvers and critical thinkers called the seven-step process. So when we first started using this process, we were really new to what we could expect. And so we told students they could pick any issue they wanted to address, any problem for which they wanted to create an intervention, and they did. We had over 160 different interventions, somewhat underwhelming performances and an overwhelming amount of work. So we got together as teachers and looked at what can we do to make this better? And we decided to look at three different arenas, urban vibrancy, education, and local food and health. We wanted to give students the opportunity to produce real solutions to real pro pro uh, problems and to give back to the community. I was in charge of uh, the urban vibrancy along with a couple of other teachers. And the teens in urban vibrancy wanted to look at three different areas. We looked at walkability, we looked at vacant lots, and we looked at teen engagement. And they were able to look at all three of these things during an annual event uh, on Roosevelt Road called the Pi Social. And the Pi Social is part of the arts program, the adaptive reuse of temporary space. And it's an annual event, and students were able to volunteer, to cut up pies, to deliver, and most important, to make connections. And one of the things that they saw during this event or felt that they needed to address was this idea that teens are sometimes viewed as detractors to a vibrant downtown arts community. So they saw this as something they wanted to address and create an intervention for. So they used the seven-step process to do that um, in a real way. They wanted to combat this stereotype. Imagine, if you will, this snarling teenager carrying an extra large styrofoam container of soda pop in one hand and a spray paint can in the other, and you have the basic idea. 
So they wanted to combat this, and they created a real solution by becoming Roosevelt Row ambassadors, friendly teens and green teas willing to help out passersby on the most active ev evening during uh, downtown on Roosevelt Row called First Fridays. So in this way, they were able to create this real solution. So, so far, we've talked about what it means to be a compassionate citizen, a creative thinker, and a problem solver. And, and that's the what part of our, our mission statement. And now we're gonna look at the how. How do we get here? We have a vision. What is the day-to-day -day operations to really realize our students' potential? So how do we do it? Where did this mission statement come from? Well, back in the early spring of 2012, and back last year, we sat down as a community and realized that we need to really recraft our, our vision and mission statement. Now that we have an idea about where we want to end up as a community, we wanted to create a framework, a statement, to really become a filter for every decision that we would make from that point forward. So teachers and administrators alike, we sat down and we came up with this really, really long involved statement that's extremely important with very intentional words. But after we did that, we understood we needed to get more information and buy-in from the greater community because it takes a village. So in the summer and fall of 2012, we invited our support staff, custodians, security, front office personnel, to come and sit and look at this particular statement, to figure out how do you plug in, in the effort of creating compassionate citizens, critical thinkers, and problem solvers, because it takes a village. After that opportunity, in the fall of 2012, when the kiddos came back, we engaged with them, had small focus groups, got their buy-in. This is what we want you to be in four years. What do you think? And after engaging with them, we reached out to the greater community, parents and community members as well, and got their feedback because it takes a village. And that was the first step, creating this framework, this mission statement, which is now really the filter for everything that we do. Every big decision that we make goes through this statement. For example, our bell schedule went through this statement. We have a, a crazy bell schedule that is different day to day. I, I cannot keep up with it, but that's necessary for creating this type of student. Our professional development to help move teachers from good to great was sent through this mission statement. Even extracurricular activities, such as student organizations and, and field trips, do those endeavors really help fulfill this mission statement? So we have a way of how we grow critical thinkers, compassionate citizens, and problem solvers. And what we've done is we've created this overarching narrative. Um, and within this overarching narrative, it has helped us structure our curriculum. So every single grade level has come up with these really big questions, essential questions. And if you think of it as a pebble that you throw into a pond, you have all of these internet connected rings. And at the center of that, we start out with the freshmen, really trying to look at who they are and how to make sense of who they are. The sophomores are looking at how do we engage with the world? Juniors look at how do we engage responsibly with a complex world. So looking at two additional layers here, responsibility, which we look at through the lens of ethics and complexity. And finally, seniors look at how do we contribute meaningfully to our complex society. So here's an unstable metaphor alert. Take another pebble and throw it in the center of that center. And you have even more interconnected circles, narrative within a narrative within a narrative. Each grade level has also worked really hard to come up with the strong, each grade level has worked really uh, hard to come up with a strong narrative that connects to each other. This vertical and horizontal alignment that we call transdisciplinary education. So I work primarily with the freshmen. So the freshmen were looking at um, humans and self, and humans and the environment, and humans and technology, and humans and society. But we start out with the human and self because we want them to really look at how they make sense of themselves. We had this culminating event a few weeks ago where we had over 100 freshmen sharing with their parents and teachers and peers not only who they are, but how who they are connects to everything they've learned thus far. And it was really beautiful. And it really sets up this strong place for the freshmen to start and to begin their journey as a bioscience student as they work toward contributing meaningfully to society. That's part of our big toolkit, and to talk a little bit more about that tool toolkit is Ms. Wilson. So 
I'm going to share some tools for one, cultivating learners, and two, cultivating the learning environment, innovating the learning environment, sorry. Um, first, use your local resources wisely. We can't offer problem-based learning without problems. So instead of making up our own, we go ask our neighbors what issues they're passionate about. And we ask advocates, um, experts, local organizations, city officials to come into our classrooms and share their expertise and engage our students in meaningful learning. More importantly, we beg them to let us bring our students to their locations in order for our students to experience what real world, the real world workforce looks like and how to make change and innovation happen outside of the school walls. We've been able to take our freshmen to um, experiences outside of the classroom each of the last four weeks, and the cool part is we haven't spent a dime of the school's money in doing so. Second, be explicit about your outcomes. We, like we said, we asked ourselves, what does the ideal graduating senior look like? And then we set out to work hard to put that experience in place. We asked students to develop 21st century skills, and we realized that mastery of those doesn't happen with a single exposure. It takes a scaffolded experience over and over and over for them to even start to gather those skills. In fact, I'm not sure mastery ever happens because as we've implemented this new model of education, each of our staff members have increased their creativity, collaboration skills, and ad adaptability throughout the year. Third, invest in the best tools. We joke all the time that we're building the airplane in the air. And well, we are, okay? But we can't do this without identifying and using the best practices from research, other schools, and each other. And we're getting really good at practicing what we preach. We use the seven-step process to work through school problems and issues, and we engage in regular assessment and reflection of our program. Ultimately, the goal is to refine our toolbox so that we can provide students the most meaningful learning experience available across the country. I think now you're starting to see why we have such an amazing asset in this school right in downtown Phoenix. And one of the critical things to understand is if we are really going to produce students here that address 21st century urban challenges, it's not going to happen with teachers and administrators and students alone. It's critical that residents from a city come into the school and that residents also welcome students out into, a, into the community. So we heard about students going out and visiting Roosevelt Row and engaging in our local community development corporation, understanding the urban vibrancy challenges we, we have and helping develop solutions. We also heard about the critical nature of bringing people in, EP, the EPA hosting its Superfund meetings here, uh, businesses coming here to help do student assessments to make sure that we have an outside perspective on what students are learning. So this is not going, this type of work is possible. These folks do an incredible job at it, but we all need to be involved. And for that final call to action, principal, one more time. The ingredients for any change is one, a vision or a goal, and then two, a plan, leverage resources. And here we figured out our vision. We want compassionate students that are critical thinkers and problem solvers. We also know it's extremely important to engage with our community. And that's where we need you. I am asking today for partnerships. And partnerships can look very different depending on your field of interest. If you're a business type, I ask you to open your doors to bioscience students. Allow them to engage with real life practitioners side by side. Or come here. Come to the school and share your information. And, and obviously financial contributions are welcome as well. As an educator, we want to collaborate with you and your community. Exchanging ideas and stories is the best way to move forward because good ones don't grow in isolation. And if you're a community member, we want to engage in your community. We want you to engage in ours. And if we do these things, we can uh, create an environment where students can work with neighbors, organizations, and community partners. We can help empower them to use their skills to make an impact. 
We can develop a community that views the school as a hub for local change and innovation. And if we do this and work together, and if we want innovative communities, everyone must be involved. Again, on behalf of Bioscience, thank you.